today? How's your day or what? Oh, I said, what day is it today for my sermon? And he said, today is a good day. Perfect day. Yeah, he said, today is a perfect day. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, if you were not here last week on Sunday, uh, you missed an amazing message. Uh, Pastor and I in the back room and some of the, uh, some of the men that were with me in the back, we really, really been doing a lot of praying. Uh, because I believe that last Sunday, something was released in the name of Jesus. Amen. Something amazing took place in the name of Jesus. Uh, I believe that there was a spirit that was cast out in the name of Jesus. And, and it, needed to, and it needed to be cast out. And I need to make sure that, that you understand what I preached about. Amen. So I want you to join me in the book of Hebrews. Don't forget, we do have children ministry. Uh, uh, if you want to take your children to the class, uh, please do so. It'll be a blessing. This way you can receive as well. <clears throat> it is our custom to stand for the word of God. If you can please join me. Can you put in the King James Version? Um, I don't know if you can do that. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading out of the King James. You might have something a little different, but just follow along with me. All right. When you're there, say amen. amen. The Hebrews is way in the back, guys. Everybody take a deep breath. Come on, take a deep breath. All right. The word of God reads, Where, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hallelujah. Looking unto who? Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction. Consider him. Amen? Yes. Consider him. I want, you to, I want you to look at that, okay? That endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despite not thou the chastisement of the Lord, chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, for whom the Lord loveth. Oh, God loves you so much. For who the Lord loveth, he chastens. And scourges every son whom he receiveth. If you endure, if you endure, endure, chastening, chastening, God who dealeth with you, dealeth, he deals with you, dealeth with you as with his sons. For what son is he whom the father chastised? Not, but if ye be without chastisement, word of all our partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons? Furthermore, we have had of our flesh which correct us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live for they verify verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure but he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness now no chastising for the presence seemeth to be joyous but grievous Nevertheless, afterwards, somebody say afterwards, afterwards, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down 
and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord looking diligently lest any man fall fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled lest he be any fornicators or profane person as he saw who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright I'm going to stop right there Father I ask you that you anoint my lips Lord I ask you Lord that you open up the ears of your children Father I ask you Lord that you have your way Holy Spirit remove all distraction Father let all your children in this house receive a seed a word from you Lord for you woke us up because you love us Father God you give us another day because you love us, Father God. You brought us here because you love us, dear Lord. And I pray right now in the name that is above all names that any demons, any spirits, anything that is not of you, we cast them out right now into the lake of fire. Has no authority, has no power in this house. Holy Ghost, have your way here today. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You may have a seat. You may have a seat. So here we go. Uh, last Sunday, there was uh, a word that was preached, and it was a, 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 a hard, amazing, powerful word of God. And I want to make sure that we understand every single thing that we are discussing. Uh, I'm glad that there's a lot of people still coming into the house of the Lord. Let's give it up for Jesus that the house of the Lord keeps on growing. Praise God. I want to just thank everyone for, for yesterday for being here uh, as we have people still coming in. I don't want nobody missing out on the word. Yesterday was a motorcycle blessing of the bikes. And uh, yeah, let's give it up for the motorcycle ministry. They did an amazing, amazing job. Man. Uh, Charlie, the president, and his team, great service of God. Uh, I was so impressed on the way it was it was uh, presented and handled. It was such a blessing. And then, you know, to, if, if that wasn't enough, you know, uh, our, our deacon, uh, Joe and Herlinda, they actually married uh, uh, one of the fighters on, on the stage and married them in the name of Jesus. And, uh, uh, it is so cool. And then later on that evening, we, we see our outreach team uh, the evangelists and all those that went to do outreach at the Lincoln Courts last night, passing out food and ministry and worshiping, and, and what an amazing church that we have here today. And I, and, I, and, I, and I often wonder, like, man, why is the enemy always attacking the body of Christ? It's because we're always moving and we're always doing something for the kingdom of God. So when you're getting attacked, you must be doing something right. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here getting attacked right now? You must be doing something right. In the name of Jesus, you must be valuable in the eyes of God for you to be getting attacked like that. You might, you, you must be carrying something of greatness in the inside that the enemy is trying to stop and prevent you from getting any further in the name of Jesus. So you should be excited that you're sitting here today because that means that God has a plan for you. A plan that's going to open doors. A plan that's going to that's gonna just bless your life in the name of Jesus. So praise the name of Jesus. That the spirit was released, it was cast out out of here, and it was a blessing to see that spirit. Me and my wife left, and we just took a deep breath. I said, Whoo, that was crazy! Expect emails and expect all these things. And I said, I'm prepared for whatever comes my way. Hallelujah! Amen. And, 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 and after that message on Friday, it, it just, just the word bastard. When I said the word bastard. Everyone got quiet. Like everybody said, mm, can't believe he said that. So I had to go to scripture to show you how great God is. He's a powerful, mighty God that he wants sons and daughters in the ministry. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I went to Indianapolis uh, a couple of weeks ago. And what I learned from there, what I received from there, is that the, the pastors and all these, I'm not into all those titles and stuff, but uh, uh, there's so much reverence and so much honor that all everyone was calling him dad and, and, and mom to the spiritual mom, the first lady, and he was calling everybody sons and daughters. And I was like, man, this pastor has a lot of kids. 
Because he called everybody's sons. And man, this guy, man. Does his wife know that he has like all these sons? Like, oh. But, but, but in, 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 in the natural, but in the spiritual realm, I said, man, there, there are sons and daughters. And I believe that our church is the church that is homegrown. It's like there's a lot of people that have not been taught or have, a lot of people that have never been to church that you're here right now. A lot of people that you said, man, I never imagined that I would be in the house of the Lord. And here you are right now. And, it, and it's just, it's my job to teach, to teach the word of God. And even if it bothers you, even if it hurts you, uh, I'm not here to kind of like, I mean, I love you, but I'm not here like to make friends with you. Uh, I mean, I, I am your friend. I, I love you. But I'm here to preach the truth. And the truth is what's going to set you free. Amen. And I just feel like there's a lot of people, good, good people that are just, I mean, you love God so much, but you're stuck. And if I wasn't a good pastor, and if I wanted to preach something, you know, sugary-ish that tastes good and mm, like that, uh, then I wouldn't be doing my job because that's what I want to preach. I want to tell you, hey, you're going to be so blessed, but then God still can rewind it. How are they going to be blessed? Ah, God, you want me to tell them that? Yeah, because I want them to be so blessed as well. Hallelujah. And that's how God works. Amen. So I need to make sure that uh, I need to make sure that the house is not empty. Hallelujah. Because I can't allow anything to come back. I don't know if you remember, I preached about this, Deacon, maybe about a month ago or two months ago. And I preached a, a, a message that was in the, in, in the book of Matthew. You can just write notes down. I preached a message. If you missed it, I preached a message. Listen, I want you to listen to me, okay? Turn, look at your neighbor and tell them, listen. Because some of you are on Facebook. Some of you are texting right now. I can see everything. <laughs> some of you are falling asleep. Come on, just hit them one time. I know it's cold, but hit them. Tell them, listen. Okay. Now look at them. Are they listening? Okay. All right. Here we go. I want you to listen. Don't go to the bathroom. You should have gone earlier. Listen. Hold it. Hold it. All right. So listen, Linda. Listen. All right. <laughs> so about a month ago, I preached a message out of the Book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 43 to 45, and the message was that when the unclean spirit was gone out of a man. He walketh through dry places, <laughs> seeking rest, and he finds none. Then he says, I will return. I will return. <laughs> I was wondering what that noise was. I, I, I like that. I didn't know what it was. I was like, that sounds pretty cool. Like, keep it going. <laughs> through <a little> rainy. <laughs> All right. When an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walking through dry places seeking rest and he finds none. Then he, then he says, I will return into my house from where I came out of. And when he comes back, he finds the house that is empty, swept clean. Then he comes back to the house and brings seven more spirits, more wicked than himself, and enters in the house. And he dwells there. And the last thing of that man is worse than the first thing. So let me explain to you. Because I'm going to break it down. Let me explain to you. The house is Sunday, last week. I said what I said. And the word of God is the word of God. And, and, and if it bothers some people, then if the shoe fits, it fits. Word, right? And so, and, and, and people might have gotten offended. But that's okay. I'd rather you get offended and learn and grow and get rooted and go to where you need to go to another level. Okay? Because I, I was I was talking, I was talking to, to the pastor. I said, man, it's, it's like a fight, man, because these are my spiritual sons and my spiritual daughters that, that they came to this church and I know, I know them because I've spent so many years with them. And I know my spiritual daughters and I know what I have in my hands. So my job, I can get upset and say, ah, get out of here. Or I can say, man, I'm gonna keep on preaching the word of God until you get it, until you learn, because I love you. Amen. And, and, and listen, it's a constant battle. So, so what it says here in the book of Matthew, it says, when an unclean spirit leaves a house. So Sunday, we said what we said. I said, listen, I'm not gonna tolerate all these things. I'm not gonna tolerate people doing what they want to do. If you want to do what you want to do and be a bastard, then you go and do what you want to do somewhere else. Right here, how are you going to submit to the one that you cannot see? Right? And, and it's 
for a place to go. Man, I don't know where to do. And that spirit was to come back because there's a lot of people right now that you love Jesus and you love Last Chance Ministries, but you like, you don't know what to do. You're, and I feel that there's a spirit in the house that wants to come back. And that's why I put this door here because there's a spirit that wants to come back. And the Bible says that when the spirit comes back, it finds the house empty, sweat clean. In other words, the house is there, but ain't nobody there. And when there's nobody there, then the enemy comes in and he messes up the house and he brings seven more spirits. So if there's a spirit in the house and, and he comes over here, I want, I want that spirit to find me here still and tell the devil, I hear you knocking, but you can't come in because we've got some amazing leaders some amazing people in the house and you can't come back over here because we already cast you out in the name of Jesus. And I know you want to come back, but I'm going to fight the good fight of faith and you can't come and mess with my family. You can't mess with my children. You can't mess with my finances. You can't come back in this house because I already casted you out a long time ago. Hallelujah. And most of the things that you need to understand that when you say, devil, get out of my house. I don't want to smoke no more. I don't want to drink no more. Right? And then, so you, some people went to retreat and you came back and you got rid of alcohol, pornography, adultery. I don't want to cuss no more. I don't want to be angry no more. I don't want to be abusive no more. But then you know the devil comes. Hey, look at all the bills. Look at your wife. Look at your children. And he wants to come back because he knows what you like. And he'll offer you what you like because he knows your weakness. And all of a sudden, if the house is empty, if he finds you complaining and saying, man, I don't know where God's at. I can't believe that God hasn't changed her or him. And now you're complaining. The devil's like, hey, over there in that house, they're complaining. They, they're not saying Jesus or hallelujah anymore. They're complaining. Let's go back to that house and let's bring seven more spirits and mess them up even more. So don't let your house be empty. When the devil opens the door, let him find you on your knees. Praise in the name of Jesus. Go into Bible studies. Go into the victorious woman. Let the devil find you. Lifting up the name of the devil names. So when he comes in, he says, man, I'm at the wrong house. Yes, devil. Thank you. 
When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, hello man. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, Ooh, it's gonna be good today. It's a lot of squirming going around. Ah. It's all right, man. Listen, if you gotta go, go now. All right. Traffic won't be so bad right now if you need right now. I'm serious. Not everybody can handle this, man. I'm serious. Not everybody can handle this. I always put on. I always put on on, on Facebook the uh, Mr. Gomez. He puts my messages out there. And I'll, and I'll share them. And it's not thousands and thousands and thousands of views like other pastors and stuff. And I said, maybe because of what I put, people don't want to watch. Because I said, hey, listen, if you, if you don't want to, you're going to watch this video and you don't want to hear the truth, don't watch it. So they don't watch it. Matthew 13, verse 9 says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, somebody say kingdom. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sold. Now, this kingdom in the scripture, and I was talking to Pastor Carlos, and we are having a little discussion here. <coughs> this kingdom that I'm talking about, it's not the kingdom of heaven, and the, it, it, it's the kingdom of God. And, and, and what is the difference? Well, the kingdom of heaven is where God resides, that's the, or the, the throne, and the kingdom of God, according to the book of Romans, chapter 14, verse 17. Romans 14, verse 17, it says that the kingdom of God is righteousness. It's peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So here, the Bible says that we just read here, the kingdom of God. It says, if anyone hears the word of the kingdom, in other words, if anyone hears the word of righteousness, if anyone hears the word of peace, and anyone hears the word of joy, which you heard last week and you hear today, and still does not understand it, then here comes a wicked one and snatches away what was sown in his heart. <laughs> so when you don't want to hear it, you don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Last week, a lot of people were confused. Oh, I thought Jesus was all about love. But we can't do this. And we can't. No, no, it's not that you can do whatever you want to do. But I'm talking about people that are stuck and want to get unstuck. I'm talking about people that, have, that by now you should have been over here and you're still way over here. I'm talking to people that are not fools, but they're wise in the name of Jesus. Because if you weren't wise, you wouldn't be here today.
You might be hurting, you might be depressed, you might be sad, you might feel like you want to give up, but if you're here today and you're breathing, you're a blessed person. You better praise the name of Jesus because the devil tried to take you out, but Jesus is on your side and he's fighting for you. If you see it, if you don't see it, if you feel it, if you don't feel it, my God is for you and he's not against you. Hallelujah. You should pray your father. And then 
after a while, about two, two inches grows up and it starts going and it goes into the ground and then it comes up above the ground and it grows among trees. And if, if you know the thorn plant, the thistle, it, it goes and it grows, uh, has his, his, let me say, his own will. It goes wherever it wants to go. I'm going somewhere with this. The thorns, the thistle goes all over the place. And even though the seed is in a, in, in, in a perfect place, here comes the thorn and the thistles among the trees. So what happens, you can have a perfect ear of corn. You can have a perfect ear of corn. The stock, the stock of the ear of the corn is straight up and down. Perfect. It looks good. The stock is good. They try to grow. It's like some people, you're good and you try to grow. But because the thistle is around it, a thistle is an unsubmissive spirit. A thistle is someone that does not want to be told what to do. A thistle is the one that says, I can't believe pastor said this and this and that. A thistle is the one that says, man, are you going to believe that or what? A thistle is someone that will cause division. That's a thistle. But if you're a stock of corn and you're going straight up, you better rise up in the name of Jesus before that thistle takes you away and shows you and kills the seed. You have to understand that it's, there's the seed that fell on the other ones. It's the same seed. It's the same word. It's the same preaching. It's the same preacher. Now it's up to you to do what you got to do. So this is something that happens. There's some good stocks in the house, but your, your neighbor, your starts telling you all these things if you have anyone around you that you're surrounded with and they're, they're, they're talking about the church or talking about the pastor or talking about other things or everything you sit down is just negative and it's just this and you know a thistle you'll know a, 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 a plant of thorns from a good soil amen because the thistle here has no church has no pastor has no submission they do what they want to do and that's not what I'm going to allow in this house hallelujah if you want to be with the thistle then go over there
in the over there in the where the where the, where the addicts are at. The, some people are looking for the devils over there in the alley where all the people are shooting up with heroin and they're looking for the devil in all these dark places. No, the devil already has them. The devil's in this house. He wants to mess with you. That's why I stand up. That's why I make noise. That's why I fight. Because the word of God, hallelujah, the word of God, nothing can defeat the word of God. The devil's already been defeated on that cross. Nothing can come against you because the word of God is in your heart. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Where's my daughter at? She's still there. She's there. She's okay. Her machine's okay. All right. They sent my daughter with a machine for her heart, but she's still here. My wife's still here. I'm still here. So the doctor, what's this machine for? He said, in case her heart stops, it'll shock her and bring her back to life. Ain't no father want to hear that after losing one daughter. She's only 21, man. But if I was stand here and fight, if I was stand here and preach the gospel, if I stay home and cry and say, man, what's going to happen? If I stay home and say, man, is my daughter going to die? I can stay home with the devil. He'll steal my joy. He'll steal my peace. But if I can come here and say, devil, my daughter, she will live. She will be seen. This is only temporary. My God. Oh, my God. He's a my God. The battle is not mine. Like me if you 
sisters and your brothers. Man and woman will let you down. But my God, he will never, ever let you down. That's my God. Come on, let's give it up for Jesus here today. I'm almost done, man. Don't, don't get up and don't move, man. I see people, I see people getting up. Just, be, just. So the farmer puts the seeds. I'm almost done. And he has to, he has to prepare the ground. He has to, he has to plow the ground. He has to dig. I don't know if you ever seen the. Now they have the big old tractor, but before they used to have the, you know, the the yoke and the, uh, the ox and all. And they plow the ground. They, and he goes in the excavates and it starts moving and it starts taking all the dirt and removes all the stuff, taking out all the ugly stuff. And they have to really cut through all kinds of different things and remove. Or, or, or else it won't, they won't produce no fruit. Right. So when you sit here, you sit here and say, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Because sometimes you feel like I'm looking at you, which I'm not. Sometimes you feel like someone told you about you, told me about you. Like, man, he's talking to me. And sometimes you feel like I'm talking to you. Like, who, what is it, you told him? Is that why you invited me to church? No, it's because God knows every single one of you. Because you're his son and you're his daughter. And he will bring you here to hear the truth. In the spiritual realm, God will bring you here, and he starts cutting. <laughs> Everything in the word comes out. I remember I told you, the, the, the word of God is sharper than it was. It, it, it penetrates, it cuts, so it doesn't feel too good. It's great. It's like a sandpaper going, can you imagine a sandpaper? That doesn't feel good, but it's, but it's taking away all the rough edges around your life. Like, this doesn't belong here. And this, and before you know it, you when you used to cuss, you don't cuss anymore because you're a son of God. When you used to say, shut up, now you say, praise the name of Jesus. God is rubbing all that all rough edges off of you. Some of you cuss like a sailor and God says, I'm looking for some cussers to come to the house so I can rub that rough edges because if they can cuss and fight like that, imagine what they can do for the king. Hebrews chapter 12. 
This is God plowing our hearts. That's what it's saying. Those that do not like to be corrected. This is what it's talking about. Test, test. The battery's going out of one. Say it again, right, baby? Say it again, God. <laughs> so, to where I started in the book of Hebrews 12, this is God plowing our hearts. He puts a shepherd. He puts a shepherd to plow and throw the seeds. It takes work. It takes giving up some things at the altar. The book of Hebrews 13, verse 17. This brought from thistles in the house. It says, obey your leaders and submit to them. For they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account to the Lord. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning. For that will be of no advantage to you. Why do you want your pastor to be all stressed out and where are you at? Where are you going? Why? And then you get mad because I'm checking up on you. Why do you get mad? It's like your daughter going wherever she wants to go. Tell you, don't, don't tell her, no, don't go there. And then they're still there. Don't you get upset? Even though it's all about love. Yeah, you love them so much that you're going to keep them away from that. That's the way it is with the spiritual fathers. I want you to understand. If you don't understand, come and talk to me afterwards. Pastor, I still don't get it. Explain to me. I'll take you to the beginning. To Genesis, all the way to Revelation. And we'll sit down and we'll talk. Because there's some people that are hired late. Those, those ones that come in and they, they cross the fence. And when the wolves come, they'll get up and leave you in a heartbeat. How many times have you seen people leave and they come back? What do we do? We be like the father of the prodigal son. We open up our arms and we love them. Because that's what we're supposed to do is love them. This church is all about love. is so amazing. The book of Proverbs, I'm going to just I'm about to finish right now. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. I just had to give you a lot of scripture man. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. It says above all else, somebody say above all. Above all else, guard your heart, children of God. For everything you do grows from it. Everything you do on Facebook, on your own, in the secret when you think nobody's watching, Remember the farmer who planted the good seeds. The book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. While everyone was sleeping, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. And he went away. You know that scripture. I'm sowing good seeds. You got other people that look good, they wear suits, and they're educated, they have it all together, but they have no pastor, no church. Look at them. Look at where they're at. Usually all the billy goats go and hang out with the other billy goats and then they look over there and say, they're wrong. No, they're wrong. Listen. Man. Yeah. <laughs> this is good seeds that are being sold. Good fruit. And then the enemy comes and he puts weeds right next to it. So the weeds look just like the wheat. And you can't tell the difference. Well, he says he's holy and she is too because they're reading the Bible and, and they love God. Ah, don't let it fool you. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. I'm serious. The devil is conniving. He will mess you up. When you hear a preacher stand here and preach a difficult message like this, you should be like a sponge and absorb everything that the Lord has to give you. I'm serious. So the wheat stands and the wheat here. What do you do? And the thing is, you just let God be God, man. You do your part. You keep on serving God. You can love them. You can cook for them. You can say hallelujah. How you doing? Just like Abraham and Lot. So, man, I love you. But you got to go, man. Because I can't get to where I need to get to. My business is not where it has to be because of you. And I know it hurts.
Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Romans 16, verse 17 and 18. Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, is what the Word of God says. Note this. Who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine. What you have learned. Hmm. Watch this. It says, note this. <clears throat> Who caused division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them, it says. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own daily. Sounds like the thistle wants to do what they want to do. And because you want to be submissive, they're still going to stick around you. Because you're sticking around still. And as long as you stick around, they're okay. Because my friend, God's all of love. Jesus sat with the sinners. He sat with the prostitutes. Pastor, what you're saying doesn't make no sense. But God is an amazing God. God is all love. He's all love. Remember the scripture that says, if you don't hate your brother, your father, your brother, if you don't hate them, you can't be my disciple. Well, if God's all love, why does he say that? He says it because he knows us. He knows that because of him, we're going to have our own family members coming up against us. He doesn't say to hate them, but he, but he knows because you're serving me, because you're going to follow me all the way through, you're going to have people that are going to hate you. But it's okay. If they hated me, they're going to hate you. If they talk about me, they're going to talk about you. If you follow There's some people that speak smooth, man. Know the word. Have you ever met an alcoholic that knows the word more than you? <laughs> Serious. I know a lot of drunk people. Hey, the word of God says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. <laughs> All scriptures. It's God's word. Man. Serious. There's some people that know. Even the devil knows the word of God. You got to zoom out, man. Please. Shut that door. Ain't nothing back there. Nothing back there. Today is about going forward in the name of Jesus. My God has some bigger doors waiting for you to step into. Hallelujah. But if you keep on going back, you're never going to experience what God has in store for you. Somebody pray in the name of Jesus if you believe that God has a bigger door for you to walk into. Life to 
Jesus is surrendering all. The reason you have your hands lifted up, that's the sign of surrender. Come on, let the devil see your hands go up. Come on, let the devil see your hands go up. Don't let the devil keep your hands down. Lift them up. And repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. Because I know you died on the cross. And you died for me. Shuffle heart. And we ask you all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 